Hello and thank you for visiting worksheets and walkthroughs.com. In this video walkthrough lesson, we're going to continue our fractions module, and this is lesson 5-1-10a, the first in our series of multiplying fractions word problems. This is the standard featured in this video walkthrough lesson. We'll be using this worksheet. You can go to worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com to print out a copy for yourself. You'll find it under our fractions video walkthrough lessons and it's entitled Fractions Module, Lesson Number 5-1-10A, Multiplying Fractions Word Problems. Directions. Solve the following fractions word problem. Show your work using the array, area, and mathematical methods. Let's take a look at this problem. We'll be doing a close read of this problem. The first time we read it, we'll read it to get the flow of the problem. And the second time through, we'll read a sentence by sentence, teasing out those math clues and determining what our math job is. Let's get started. Christopher ate one half of his sandwich and placed the remaining half on the kitchen counter. Garbanzo took advantage of the amazing opportunity. With two paws on the counter, the sneaky pooch quickly gulped down two-thirds of the remaining sandwich before his surprise boy put an end to his enjoyment. What fraction of the whole sub did Garbanzo eat? All right, let's take a look at that first sentence. Christopher ate one half of his sandwich and placed the remaining half on the kitchen counter. Did you hear some math information there? I bet you did. Look at that, one half. If you're thinking one half was a math clue, excellent, good for you, it is. Christopher ate one half of his sandwich and placed the remaining half, so the remaining half, look at that, we've got half written in numerical or, or standard form, and we've got half over here written in word form, but it means the same thing, doesn't it? So half, the remaining half that is, was on the kitchen counter. Next sentence. Garbanzo took advantage of the amazing opportunity. Math information there? No, you're probably thinking that's a story sentence. It is. Just story information in that sentence. Next sentence. With two paws on the counter, the sneaky pooch quickly gulped down two-thirds of the remaining sandwich before his surprise boy put an end to his enjoyment. I bet you this popped right out at you, didn't it? Two-thirds. That's another fraction. Okay, so the sneaky pooch, that is Garbanzo, and he is quite sneaky, I must add. But anyhow, he quickly gulped down, quickly gulped down two-thirds of the remaining sandwich. And his, his boy came by. That, that's some, again, story information. Now, we're on to the last sentence. And this kind of follows the trend we've been noticing lately in our story problem solving. At the end of the story problem, a lot of times when you have a question, that is your math job. What fraction of the whole sub did Garbanzo eat? So we're trying to determine what fraction. So we're looking for a fraction of the sub, the whole sub, that Garbanzo did eat or how much he ate. And look at that. There's our math job, isn't it? All right, so we need to solve that. Let's dive right in, and we'll use this mathematical model. Now, what are the important fractions we need to work with? Well, we need to find out what fraction of the sub garbanzo ate. And we, it says right here, 2 thirds of the remaining sandwich is what he gulped down. So how much was remaining? If you remember, Christopher ate half. Well, that was gone. And then you replaced the remaining half on the kitchen counter. So two-thirds of that remaining half. So let's think of it that way. So we've got two-thirds, two-thirds of one-half. Two-thirds of one-half. And a lot of times, you might be thinking this too. So if you are good for you, we see that word of. And of usually means multiply. Yes, yes, multiply. So now, 
if let's change that into an, an expression. So we got two thirds times one half. There's an expression. How can we change it into an equation? <laughs> Look at that. Just, just add an equal sign and we'll solve it. We'll make it an equation. So speaking of solving this, if you're multiplying fractions, remember you can simply multiply the numerators. So we've got 2 times 1. And you're probably thinking, ah, no problem. 2 times 1 is 2. Good. Good for you. And then we can multiply the denominators. 3 times 2. You're probably thinking, ah, that would be 6. Uh-huh. Definitely. So we, there you go. What fraction of the whole sub the garbanzo eat? 2 6. Yep. Definitely. And if you're thinking that the numerator is one-third of the denominator, yeah, it's also equal to one-third, isn't it? So anytime your denominator is three times more than your numerator, your fraction is going to be equal to one-third, isn't it? So you could really say that two-sixths is equal to one-third. That would be fine. That shows a deeper understanding there. Simplified two-sixths because we know it's an equivalent fraction to one-third. Yep. Now, We've solved that. So it was two thirds of the sub. And, yep, okay. Or I'm sorry, two sixths or one third of the sub. So now let's show a deeper understanding. We can do that with a visual fraction model. We've got two that we can work with here. We've got the array method. Let's try that first. So once again, we had two thirds times one half. Because Garbanzo ate two-thirds of that one-half of a sub that was remaining on the counter. So, how can we show that as an array? Well, the denominators are your friends when you're, you're trying to make an array for two different fractions or two different factors when you're multiplying here. So, we've got a denominator of three and a denominator of two, don't we? So, well, let's, let's try this. We've got a three, get that, three by two, three by two, array. Okay, so you can number it if you want to as well. It really might be very helpful for you to do that. So 3 by 2. 1, 2. Look at that. Okay, so we've got a 3 by 2 array. We just have to fill it right in, don't we? There we go. Okay, perfect. Yes. But you're probably wondering, how do we apply these fractions or insert these fractions into our array? Hmm. We'll take a look at this. Let's show two out of every three. Okay? Two out of every three to represent how much Garbanzo ate of that half. All right, there's one. There's two out of this three. See how it's organized for us? One, two, three. Perfect. It lines up perfectly. So we got two out of three. Mm -hmm. That's two thirds. And then we've got another group of three down here in the second row. So let's do two out of three to match that or represent that fraction. Okay, nice. But now, we have to represent this one half, don't we? This one half, okay. We, we already took care of the two thirds and we have to represent this one half in our array. Let's do it. So, one out of every two. And if you noticed, look at that. It's already organized for you, isn't it? That's why it's great you can set up this three by two array. Groups of two, group of two, group of two. So now we have to show one out of every two. Look at that. One out of this group of two here. One out of this group of two. One out of this group of two. And and when you have an overlap there, or in other words, ones that are circled and X'd out, that were represented by both fractions, because it's two thirds of one half, you have your product right there. Look at that. Two, one, two, out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So definitely, you've got it. That would be two out of six. And isn't that the same that we got over here? Yes, it is. So that checks out. And if you look at it, is this one out of, or one third? Sure, it would be two. So there we go. It's also equal to one third. All right. And, you know, if you looked at the whole, it was six equal parts, and you've got one. This, this group of two would represent one out of three parts that would make up that whole. It would be awesome. There it is. So now, let's move on, and we've got our area model. And in the area model, 
we've been using rectangles to represent our whole and then we've been dividing it up to show our fractional amounts. So now we're going to do the same thing here. And if you think back to the beginning of the problem, you'll remember that Christopher ate one half and then we had one half remaining on the counter. Garbanzo ate two thirds of that remaining half. So, so we started off with one half. Uh, let's shade that in. That was how much was sitting up on the counter there. Got one half. Shade that in. Go ahead and do that on your, your papers if you're following along. And once again, if I'm going too quickly for you, feel free to pause the video and, and resume whenever you're ready. So now, we've got to show two-thirds of this one-half. So you can imagine you imagine this one-half of a sub sitting on a counter, and that, that sneaky pooch Garbanzo, Bonzo, he got up on the counter and he ate two-thirds of the sub before Christopher shut him down. All right, so we've got two-thirds. All right, how can we show two-thirds? Well, we'd really have to break it up. Or, or subdivide it, and let's go across horizontally this time when we subdivide. We went vertically to show that one half. Now we'll, we'll go horizontally once again to show it, broke it up into thirds. Now, Garbanzo, he ate, look at that, let's show two thirds. All right, he ate two thirds. Two thirds. And if you think, okay. Why is that two thirds? Well, if you look at this up here, that would be one third of that sub, wouldn't it? So one out of three, that will make up that whole sub. And he ate two out of three parts that would make up the whole sub, didn't he? Now, if you look at this, it's a lot like the array. You can see the overlapping sections showing right here. Look at that, and we've got two out of the one, two, three, four, five, six parts that make up that sub. So, once again, we came up with the same answer. So, two thirds times one half, or two thirds of one half in this case, you can see that portion of the sandwich that Garbanzo would have eaten. So, that would be two, six, once again, and that equals simplified. If you imagine this part being one out of three parts that will make up the whole sub. You could do that. So there we go. We've got two third, two six equals one third of the sub. So how can we show a complete answer? Well, let's go back up and check to make sure we solved this por portion up here. That was our math job, wasn't it? So let's see. We've got what fraction of the whole sub did Garbanzo eat? Well, let's let's just finish it off. Garbanzo. Eight one third or two six, okay. We could put that in there, we could do that or two six or one third since those are equivalent fractions. And okay, two six or one third of the sub. If you put sandwich, that would work just as well. All right, there we go. So we solved that, and not only did we solve that, we showed numbers in our mathematical method. We used pictures in both of our visual fraction models, the array method and the area model. And we used words up here to make a nice, well-rounded answer. And look at that, a happy student. Mm -hmm. There it is. OK, that was a quick look at multiplying a fraction by a fraction. Thanks for checking out worksheets and walkthroughs.com. And we'll see you again next time.